Hello and welcome everyone to this awesome second video about Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay, we already saw how to derive Kirchhoff's current law and now we want to have a look at how we can derive Kirchhoff's voltage law from Faraday's law of induction. Actually, that is one of Maxwell's equations. And yes, let's have a look at this. What does Faraday's law tell us? It tells us that the curl the curl of the electric field E and with the line beneath these signs I want to imply that these are vectors okay this is an alternative kind of notation instead of writing this E vector for the electric field I will just simply write it with the underline so don't get confused about that is equal to some zero vector now actually most time you leave that zero vector out but um, I've written it down so we can just simply again use the left hand side uh, only because we will only look at stationary problems and now here comes uh, the magnetic field with its partial time derivative okay again the magnetic field is a vector now what we will have a look at is only at the stationary case meaning that we have no changing magnetic field so we assume that the magnetic field is constant for example you have that if you have only direct current so we are only looking at direct current now I've drawn here a little picture okay I've actually drawn two pictures so that you can imagine what actually is happening what we are doing um, first of all imagine we had some resistors okay or some currents that show some voltage drop along these lines so from here to here we have no voltage drop and here also only at these small little lines okay only at these little resistors how they are, I'm calling them but you could uh, think of them as any arbitrary kind of electric element where we have some kind of voltage drop now what we will do is we will walk along this loop you know uh, that uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law is actually nothing else than going through a loop and then adding all the voltage and it will give you zero in total okay um, now we are actually doing the same we are walking around this path and I drew these dashed lines here in the a little bit offside just that you know that uh, there is some kind of path but actually it's going along these wires through this uh, resistor 5 and then here and so forth so actually it is going through that in order to imagine that a little bit better I've drew three uh, resistors okay and they I, I drew them like a circle so that I can draw a surface much easier we can imagine that we are walking around this boundary of a surface okay and the surface is arbitrary but what is important about this is that the surface has um, to have its boundary where these uh, wires go along okay this is called ds so we will call it d uh, actually this is del s and this is s okay the surface and there we have the normal to this uh, kind of surface now what do we do with that so I actually told you we will only look at the stationary case where uh, this magnetic field time change uh, dependence is not there so we are only left with a curl of the electric field is equal to the zero vector now what will I do I already told you that we have some kind of surface in here so let's integrate this expression over some kind of surface so I will uh, write double integral signs here and the surface I will just call S and we have the curl of the electric field now I have to dot this with um, uh, dot this with the normal vector ds okay this is the infinitesimal so actually I'm uh, if you imagine this was the surface and then we take a little piece of the surface there is for example the normal vector and uh, this vector here let's say this was um, the curl of the electric field and uh, what you have then is also this little ds 
which is the infinitesimal small area and we integrate over all of them over the wool surface to get something out of this. On the left hand side we are simply doing the same so we have some kind of surface we are integrating this dotted with a normal vector ds. Now you see something very easy happening here we get zero and if we have zero and if we integrate uh, the surface of something that is zero we get zero out of this. Okay so we have on the uh, I will just uh, flip the sides of the equation so this guy will come to the left hand side so we have zero is equal to some kind of surface integral and um, first I'll just copy that so this is S it's the curl of the electric field uh, dotted with a normal vector ds. Now what we will do in the second step is we will say okay cool that is a surface integral and this should remind you of the second important integral theorem that there is um, in there in calculus so there's the first one is the divergence theorem and the other is the Stokes theorem for integrals and what it actually tells us um, is imagine we have a path integral along a boundary of S and now S can be any curve now the, the curve should have some kind of smoothness and so forth on it uh, but I'm not talking about the, the very very intrinsic prob uh, properties of that for example let's call our uh, vector field E it could also be force or something like this and then you take some uh, kind of infinitesimal um, arc element here along your path so for example like this and then you look okay here so we have here some kind of dr this is dr and then we have some kind of uh, E in here say it is in this direction you dot them and then you integrate all of them and uh, what turns out is that this can be written by the Stokes theorem as uh, the surface integral of the rotation of this E multiplied uh, or dotted with a normal vector ds and you should be not very very surprised that we get the exact expression is here so instead of um, going from a path integral to a surface integral we do the opposite we go from a, a surface integral to a path integral so we get this guy here e dr the boundary of s now this gets really really interesting actually you should know what this is these are potential terms okay these are potential drops now we go for our second thing because because our path is actually going through these currents uh, these not currents but these kind of resistors we can assume many many things so first of all we can assume that the electric field in here is constant okay how can we do that imagine if we cannot assume it over this wall uh, resistor we could break these resistors for example you have some kind of resistor you break this up into infinitesimally small uh, resistors and then you say okay here it is actually constant and then almost constant and then you can use this as a constant value okay and uh, another thing is that we assume that this is in the same direction as the path that we take okay uh, and by same direction I actually am only talking about parallel okay it's parallel it can be anti-parallel and we are doing the same trick as for Kirchhoff's current law we are saying that this guy is equal to E dr okay again I'm uh, this guy is with a sign okay it has it has some sign on it uh, normally you would say this is some kind of magnitude I write it down again so if you have a vector a you dot it with a vector b this is equal to the magnitude of vec vector a multiplied with the magnitude of vector b times cosine alpha the angle between both of these guys now this guy has a sign and this sign can can come from this cosine value okay but now I will take this sign into this E value okay for example if your electric field is in the same direction as your dr then this is positive and if your 
um, electric field and your um, infinitesimal arc length piece are in the anti-parallel direction and this is negative okay I think this is easy to comprehend now the next thing is that we are saying that we only have voltage drops in here so uh, we assume that there is no electric field along uh, the other places we only have electric field in this resistor so we can break this whole integral into little little pieces across these resistors okay so I will write it down as the sum of I integrals and these integrals are now not closed integrals these are just open pieces okay where we have constant electric field this is why I call this EI and we are integrating over DR now again you can take this EI out of the integral because it is constant we assumed it to be constant and if it is not constant over the wall resistor we can split the resistor up into many many small pieces and then integrate over them so we can rewrite this as the sum over all I EI and then we take the integral DR del SI okay now what is this guy this is just a arbitrary length okay this is just a length because we are integrating uh, along these little pieces okay let's imagine we have some path along this way so uh, we are integrating these small little drs and this length is del si then um, actually I'm uh, del si means these little short pieces along this uh, path that we walk so this guy is just um, I will not call it si I will call it li so for length i so we have this guy here which is ei li now this should not be very very surprising we know um, that voltage okay I think in America they are using V as voltage voltage of I is equal to the electric field I multiplied with the length of I okay so we can rewrite this equation finally to a more appealing way that we can say that these guys are equal to the voltage drop so we get Kirchhoff's famous voltage law that the sum over all voltage drops along a closed path in your circuit is equal to zero now again Im remember what we assumed okay there were many many assumptions that we used um, the most important is that we said we are only working for stationary fields again implying that if you work with non-stationary fields you might get a problem using Kirchhoff's law okay and um, yeah that actually concludes our derivation let's go um, and check what we actually did so we started off with the Maxwell's equation which was actually Faraday's induction law then uh, we said okay we are only looking at the stationary part so the uh, del del t the magnetic field piece uh, was just neglected so we were left with this stationary uh, Faraday's law equation or how you call it and then we said okay let's integrate over some kind of surface uh, and important about the surface was that its boundary was pinned to your uh, loop in your circuit okay and then we turned this um, surface integral into a uh, path integral then we broke up the path integral into little little pieces and said that on these little little pieces we have uh, so to say constant electric field and then uh, we took that here into the sum summed over all of them and then we saw we get EI multiplied with LI which is the voltage that we have in here and we uh, derived uh, famous Kirchhoff's voltage law in a very very quick and I hope uh, very good to follow derivation okay that's actually concluding this video on uh, Kirchhoff's laws I did it uh, using um, Maxwell's equations so uh, if you 
uh, didn't know, I have also a video on the derivation of Kirchhoff's uh, current law. So if you want to see these videos, just uh, look into my channel, have a look at them. And uh, yeah, that's it actually. If you uh, liked my videos, please, I would be very happy if you could give a thumbs up. And also feel free to give some comments, some kind of positive or negative or constructive or destructive uh, feedback. I'm always happy to hear something, another opinion on a topic and so forth. And uh, yeah, feel free to ask questions if you have them, because I hope I can help you to understand this derivation uh, in more detail. Okay, and uh, that's actually concluding this video. Uh, thank you for watching and see you guys.